What's up, it's Marco, Sage of Soccer, and today I'm talking about the EFL Championship. Yep, the second tier of England. It's a really high level of play, and we got a lot of U.S. Men's National Team players to talk about. The season just ended, the regular season just ended, I should say. We got two teams that got promoted, a couple of teams in the playoffs, and again, a lot of U.S. Men's National Team eligible players in that list, so I want to talk about some. So, starting things off, we got Fulham getting promoted to the Premier League. And, yeah, really good for Anthony Robinson and Tim Ream. But we got some other players in the academy, too. I feel like we should mention, especially after seeing someone like a Luca De La Torre come through at Fulham's academy and just end up doing great. So those guys never mentioned. But let's start off with Anthony Robinson, Tim Ream. Both had great seasons. Anthony Robinson, I believe he was named to the Premier League, or not the Premier League, the EFL Championship team this season. Great job by him. He's getting forward very well, defensively really solid, and he did a great job this season. And he gets another chance to prove himself in the Premier League. Last time, I feel like he played pretty well, but at the same time, like you can't really say he was doing anything to really separate himself as a left back and prove that he was at a Premier League level. I mean, he could have been signed by another team, but he went back down with Fulham. But he did a good job proving himself, and he's back in the Premier League. And this time, I feel like he's there to stay. Whether or not that's with Fulham, Fulham have gone up and down a lot. But uh, Fulham did have a really good championship team this year. Like, Mitrovic was just on crazy form. Uh, they are losing a couple players. Maybe I'll get Carvalho loaned back to them. But, hey, Fulham, really good job to get back. And Tim Ream, he did very well for them. He's a great championship uh, center back. However, he's a championship center back. Like, and, and that's not a bad thing. Like, dude, I... I would love it if the U.S. Men's National had, like, a Naki Wells, who's a championship-level striker, like, the guy from Bermuda. Like, I would take him on the National Team in a heartbeat. I'd take, like, a Jordan Rhodes. I'd take, like, a prime David Nugent. But at this point, we have players who are above that level, so Tim Reed probably not going to end up back in the National Team. I kind of feel bad for him because last season he was in the Premier League and he, like, didn't play at all, but he was, like, a regular in the squad. And now he's, like playing every game and he's doing well and we just we just haven't called him back at all like I'm not advocating for it he shouldn't be called back but like if you're him you got to be like what is going on this guy's so weird like seriously what's up with that but yeah Fulham really good job to get back to the Premier League Andy Robinson I feel like he's going to be their starting left back for them he's going to do very well Tim Ream he'll probably be more of a culture guy at that point but hey it's good to see him back and He'll probably get Fulham promoted back to the Premier League in 2023, or 2024. So, hey, good for him. And I want to talk about a couple of academy guys, because we have Alex Borto, a U20 regular for the national team. He's Fulham, he could possibly be Fulham's third-choice goalkeeper right now. It's kind of tough to say, but he's looking very good. And, well, I don't expect him to get playing time at all next year. Fulham getting promoted to the Premier League, I believe that means they're going to be back in the Papa John's Trophy, which means he'll be playing... If he's in the U23 team, he'll be playing first-team football against uh, League 1 or League 2 teams. So that's going to be really good to see. Get to see him make his pro debut. I'm looking forward to that, and hopefully he can do well. Uh, same thing with uh, Devon Tanton, uh, the right back. He could do a very good job as well. I think that Marlon Fossey is going to be on his way out. He got a decent amount of playing time on loan at uh, Bolton. So I don't expect him to be there, but two youth players I really expect to do well. Hopefully you see more of Alex Porto because he was, I think he's looking really good at the U20 level. And I don't think we can expect to see Selena there anymore, like, which I think it's more of a good thing than a bad thing that we have a guy who's like grown out of the youth team. So I'm not even going to say it's a bad thing. It's a good thing. We'd see more players, but it is a thing. So good for Alex Porto. I'm really high on that player and a lot of good things going on in full America. Uh, then... Bournemouth, not really much to talk about. Cameron Carter-Vickers helped them out last year, so they did get promoted. Maybe they look towards him as a signing for center back. Maybe Fulham does as well, because Cameron Carter-Vickers looks like he... The Premier League's a possibility for him. I know that Celtic won him back, but he's did very well, so I can definitely see him ending up in the Premier League. So just something to remember with Bolton going up, but uh, I wouldn't expect him to go there. It's definitely possible, but I don't know. We'll have to see how the summer plays out. Next, we got to talk about a couple of players in the playoff. Teams that have a chance to get promoted to the Premier League. We have Nottingham Forest, uh, Huddersfield, Luton Town, and why am I forgetting the other team? <laughs> we got Huddersfield. They're going to be playing uh, 
no, Nottingham Forest won at the end, so they're going to be playing Luton Town, and it's Nottingham Forest playing, uh, or Huddersfield playing Sheffield United. I just remembered Sheffield United. So we got a couple players to talk about with a lot of U.S. Men's National implications, three players who we could possibly expect to play, and I want to talk about another one at the end as well. But starting things off, we got Dwayne Holmes at Huddersfield. Dwayne Holmes is somebody with a lot of fans, and I think he's a quality player. I don't think he's U.S. Men's National Team quality, but he's definitely very good. Like, I think the discourse around him is that, like, if he was in the MLS, like, if he decided to go to the MLS, he'd be a regular on the national team, and I, I can't really disagree with that. But I think just on his quality, I don't really rate him above Luke De La Tour. I don't rate him above uh, Abusio, McKinney, Musa, and... That doesn't really make him into the starting lineup for me, but hey, he's still a quality player. Like he should be on the bubble. Like just because I don't think he's in the should be in the national team doesn't mean he's a bad player. Like our eight, like our midfield has suddenly become our deepest position, and him he should be in the conversation. I don't think he should be in the team, but he should be in the conversation. And if he gets to the Premier League, that makes it undeniable. Because if you're playing regular minutes in the Premier League, even on a relegation fighting team. You're going to be able to show your stuff on a high level, like a huge stage. And I feel like Dwayne Holmes, that'll really do his career wonders for the national team. I'm definitely going to be rooting for him. Next, we got Nottingham Forest, and we have two players to root for. Ethan Horvath and Alex Mighton. Uh, I'll talk about Horvath last. Let's get into Alex Mighton, because he's a dual national. He has a very good chance to be playing with England, but I think he's leaning towards America right now. It's kind of like with Jonathan Gomez, where it's like, Jonathan Gomez, I view him as like kind of 60-40 going to Mexico. With this guy, I think he's 60-40 going to us. Like I feel like he has a good chance of playing with us. He's a really solid player, but he's very young, and he's still way ways away from a national team level player. Like Judging by our wingers, we got Pulisic, Reyna, Wea, Aronson. Like, you're not breaking into that group. So I feel like he's still far away from the national team, but he's a quality player. And something about him is... Well, I would probably have, like, a Conrad De La Fuente above him, like a Matthew Hoppe, Nicholas Giacchini. I'd probably have all of them above him quality-wise, but Alex Mighton's got a really good left foot. I actually found out it's not his natural foot, but it's still really good. And when you have that really good left foot, that allows a lot more options for us. Because we don't have left-footed players in this team. For some reason, this whole generation, like, the American-born players, we only got Luca De La Torre, who's, like, a good left-footed player. We got Jedi Robinson. He's foreign. John Brooks like naturally not born in a from a foreign academy I should say because I, I've got a whole video talking about that maybe because I want to make an off, offspring reference kids aren't all right get it but anyway Alex Mine, when you're that left-footed player it enforces a lot of other options if we want to play with a big striker like say Jordan Pifalk we're bringing Haji Wright having a left-footed winger on that left-hand side that allows us to get a lot more crosses in and we don't really have that as an option with a right-footed left winger but if we put him on the right-hand side, that allows him the option to cut in. And we don't really have anybody who's that great at cutting in from uh, the right-hand side. So Alex Mine, he, even though I wouldn't really say he's a uh, national team quality, he's such a, like a, he's a piece that we need in the team. And I'd really like him to join the national team. And he's still a really young player. So he's got a lot of time to develop. I think this is, this is really the first year he's broken into the first team. And... He's going to be a good player. I wanted to get into the national team. Honestly, it might be better for us if Nottingham Forest don't get promoted because that would mean more playing time for him. Though he could go out on loan, but it's tough to say. But Alex Mine, really good player. Then Ethan Horvath, possibly America's best goalkeeper. But he's definitely not Nottingham Forest. <laughs> he's like, every time he plays, he like impresses, but he loses every single positional battle he's in. And... Like, at, at some point, that has to mean something. Like, who's that old NFL quarterback? Like, Matt Flynn. He has to be, like, that guy. Like, something's up. Like, you're losing all these battles when you're good on the field. Like, I don't know. But he needs playing time, so no matter what, he's probably going to leave Forrest this year, even if it's on loan. This promotion really doesn't matter for him, but... uh you know, looking forward to seeing him play. There's a possibility that he'll get some playing time. Uh, Samba has gotten a red card this year, so you keep your eyes peeled for that, but you really can't expect Ethan Harvath to play. And that's everybody for, like, the playoffs right now. Uh, Lyndon Gooch is in the League One playoffs in Sunderland, so if you want to look out for that. But uh, last guy I want to talk about is actually not USA eligible, but he was once, kind of. Uh, that's Dan Potts. He's on Luton Town. 
He's a goal. He's a left back for them. Kind of a backup at this point. Kind of recovering from injury. Don't know if he's going to be first team eventually, but he was in the USA Youth National Team system in around 2013. He was in the U20 team, but then we discovered that he didn't have citizenship, which, like. I complain about our federation, but we have improved leaps and bounds. But he didn't have his citizenship, so we obviously had to stop calling him up. But uh, he's from West Ham. He came through the academy. Uh, he actually overcame leukemia at a really young age, so that's really great to see there. And um, he was growing with this Luton Town team. If you know this Luton Town team, 2014, they were in the conference, which was the fifth tier of England. He signed with them when they were in League 2, the fourth tier, and he's worked his way up, and now he's got a chance to be a Premier League left back. Like, that's an amazing story. I wish that he was still eligible for us. He'd probably be our backup left back at this point. He's a really solid player, and man, even though probably rooting for Dwayne Holmes to get up, I'm really looking forward to seeing Dan Potts, and if he can get to the Premier League, like, that's just awesome to see, and that Ludentown story is awesome to see. I mean... Just how far they've grown. Another team that Cameron Carter Vickers was a part of, he could end up there as well. So if, if you want to make that your excuse to root for Loon Town, be your, be my guest. Get Cameron Carter Vickers to the Premier League. But yeah, Loon Town, looking forward to them, rooting for them, rooting for everybody in the American team. Uh, I don't know, even can even uh, Sheffield United have uh, Daniel Jebison, who's the Canadian. They've got a dual international who's an American as well. Uh, I, th- I think they call him, like, Little Messi, but everybody they call, like, Little Messi ends up, you know, not panning out. Except for Brandon Aronson, Medford Messi. So, hey, maybe we're the ones who cracked the code on the Little Messi. So, yeah, a lot of good players for us, and I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody in the Premier League. Fulham's going to be really fun to watch. Uh, man, I hope maybe Cameron Carter-Vickers ends up on one of these teams, and either Dwight Holmes, Alex Mighton, you know, anybody, it's going to be really fun to see. And I'm rooting for these America guys. Just want to let you know about championship playoffs coming up. And yeah, so I'll talk about it right now. See ya.